Hello everyone, welcome to the Lost World Museum. My name is John Adolfi and we're going to do a little bit of recap on the video that we just shared last night, which is, is science lying to us? Now, you know, obviously that's just an attention getting uh, statement or title, but we're going to go further into it. But are they intentionally lying to us? I don't believe they are. Um, not at all. Now, what about? Take a look at these three rocks right here. We got sandstone, limestone, and travertine. The question is, how old are they? And how can we know how old they are? How quickly did they form? And if they formed quickly, you know, let me tell, tell you a little bit about one of the criticisms that we received from our video. And that is they said, well, just because it forms quickly or not doesn't mean that it's necessarily young. I can say or old, but let me just, let me stop right there. You're absolutely right. Just because something forms quickly doesn't necessarily mean that it's old or young. It, it doesn't, it doesn't. So the assumption though is, is that it's old. But the problem is, and I've been, I was sharing this with others. It's like, but the masses out there have no idea that this travertine right here can form within years not thousands and millions of years, but years. Let me show you. And this is what we shared in the video. This right here is the stone teepee in Thermopolis, Wyoming. This bad boy got its start in 1909. This is 1920. Underneath that, oh, approximately, I don't know, 10, 20 inches of stone is a brick teepee and there is a pipe coming up from under you know right through it and what it was doing was just letting off a little bit of pressure now what happened was is that one to two inches a year of travertine is added to the thickness of this stone teepee today i don't have a picture of it you can see in the video it's it's round and it's cool looking that's a hundred years and it must have put on, oh, a good, I would say, four or five feet, I'm guessing, on each side, all around. How fast does it take to form travertine? Well, when the conditions are right, it takes just a matter of years. That doesn't necessarily prove how old this one is, one way or the other. But here's my point. My point is, is that nobody is at least allowing us to know that rock can form very quickly when the conditions are right. Why wouldn't they? Well, they'll tell you it's no secret, but the problem is it's never promoted. I mean, think about this for a second. This limestone right here taken from the Paluxy River in Glen Rose, Texas, is, according to geology, approximately 100 to 108 million years old. And yet we do find dinosaur tracks in it. Let me show you one. And that dinosaur track should tell us that <clears throat> it's at least 65 million years old because we all know that dinosaurs were destroyed by a large meteor. I still don't get that theory. I don't see how a meteor six miles across or whatever it is, is six kilometers, whatever, slamming into the Yucat Yucatan Peninsula is going to destroy every single dinosaur throughout the world. I just... But... You, you all of a sudden bring up a worldwide flood that lasted 371 days that was 22 and a half feet above whatever the, whatever the highest elevation of the mountains back then was, 22 feet above every single mountain with tsunamis, earthquakes, tidal waves, and you get laughed at. You get laughed at. But yet, that would do the job. And it would bury these dinosaurs in sedimentary layers... OK, and fossilization because of the processes involved would take place. Do you see the, the processes of, of, of fossilization taking place right now? When was the last time we dug something up that was going through the fossilization process? That was obviously old. OK, <laughs> so obviously we've never observed either the worldwide flood or the formation of these rocks. 
we can only make certain assumptions and hoping that our assumptions, and if there's more than one assumption, that they're all correct. You know, back in um, the, the, actually, I think it went, goes back into the 1600s, but during the 1700s, there was this push, especially the late 1700s, during the uh, French Revolution. The French Revolution and all that that took place back in the late 1700s was in one respect just a, 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 um, a reaction to the church and state of the Roman Catholic Church and the different you know, factions of countries, you know, different countries throughout Europe and their involvement. <clears throat> France finally said enough is enough. They kicked Catholicism out of the country. And in 1793, they established that their, if you want to call it state religion, was reason. They even had, they had a woman, figurative, coined as the mother or the daughter of uh, wisdom, or excuse me, of reason, and her name was Diana. Diana was the goddess of reason. They wouldn't even put up a statue to Diana because they didn't want to exemplify or copy anything that the Catholic Church did. And I'm a former Catholic, so, you know, forgive me. I'm, I'm not getting down on Catholics. I'm just sharing a little bit of history. So what they would do is they would have, they hired this actress and she would go around and, and do her thing draped in a toga and she was the representative of the goddess of reason. Now the goddess of reason or this concept of reason was enlightenment. They were throwing the baby out with the bathwater with, with the church. They didn't even go to Protestantism. They didn't even try that out. I think they were just so unnerved by it and who knows what else was going on behind the scenes that motivated it, but they wanted nothing to do with religion at all. That's when the guillotine was set up, by the way, that same year. And many, many, many people died by it. Do you want to know how long that regime or that uh, government of reason lasted before measures had to be brought in and get rid of it? One year. So if any of you out there are wondering from a pure, unadulterated, atheistic, I mean, they got rid of, you know, the, the, the Cathedral of Notre Dame? That was denuded of anything that resembled Christianity. The crosses were taken down. Um, the friars were kicked out. Uh, you know, they took the statues and got rid of them. It was, it was made into a, a wisdom uh, hall, a reason hall, the Hall of uh, Diana, even though it wasn't called that. But that's what I'm, what I'm getting at is, is that when a society decides that they are going to do this completely 100% without any you know, influence from uh, the scriptures, let's just say, uh, any Judeo-Christian influence. And, you know, I know you could make the case that, you know, Japan has fared nicely without it. I, I get it. I don't have an answer for you, but I'm just talking about Europe when they went from having them to not having them. And even when they had them, you know, it wasn't the ideal situation, as you well know, during that um, dark ages with the Roman influence that took place, uh, you know, basically trying to strip men of liberty of conscience, okay, and uh, replacing it with the dictates of the church. That's not Christianity. Christianity is what took place in the United States where they gave back the rights of men and gave back the liberty of conscience. That's what the United States was all about. So, one year, totally devoid of God, and it all fell apart. So, it doesn't work. So anyone who appreciates the freedoms that we have here, both freedom of conscience, be able to just pick up and go and do something, is actually a biblical influence on the men who created the Constitution. It was the first time ever in the Earth's history that that actually took place. Back to this. So let's bring a couple of more things in here. How about coal? How long does coal take to form? Coal is typically, you'll see, two, three hundred million years old. They assign it for this. Compressed to vegetable matter. It's usually, I guess, um, bark or, or whatnot. They say that it's, um, uh, that it's a swamp that basically fossilized, you know, the, the wood fossilized, and it became coal. Compressed, heated. Well, you can take the same materials, put them in a, in a metal cap, pipe and cap, put mineralized water in it, put it under pressure, a special type of pressurized uh, furnace, and within six weeks to six months, 
you can get it to start to turn black and then eventually turn into um, what one could consider the same type of, you know, uh, metamorphosis that coal went through. Now, they say that doesn't prove anything just because you can do it in the lab. Well, they can do it with diamonds as well, too. And I'm not going to show it to you today, but you can do it with fossilization as well, too. I have to my left here a fossil of a leaf that took 48 hours. And it, friends, it is a fossil. I'll show you that on a separate video when I actually showcase it, maybe in the next week or so. So let's take one quick look at something before we... Uh, before we move on, here is the geological column, okay? And it goes from the Cambrian all the way up to where we are today. Now, here's what I learned I thought was very cool, cool and I want to pass it on to you. From a geological evolutionary standpoint, it is time periods and ecological, um, an ecological uh, era. So everything that's in this layer right here is during a specific time and place, obviously, with certain creatures and or plants or combination of all of them. And this is a certain time span with each of these. And then here's the assignment of the different types of fossils that you find in them. Now, during a worldwide flood context, if you were to look at the same geological column, the interpretation wouldn't be um, time periods of ecology or ecological, you know, uh, system. It would be the natural progression of a worldwide flood that takes place over the course of first 40 days, then 150 days of it sloshing around and things getting classified. So of course you're going to have your sea creatures at the very bottom of layer of any kind of fossilization or burial. And you work your way up, the more intelligent creatures, they are looking for higher ground. And finally, you're finding the larger ma mammals at the, at the very top. That's just another way of interpreting it. So anyways, um, I want to encourage you, for those of you that want to get cozy with us, I'm going to, I want to, I want to um, just give you a text number. Those of you that say, hey, I would like to get um, alerted next time you go live or when you got something cool to share. We share something maybe a few times a week and it's free only for the United States and Canada. So 315-509-9075. This number will also be in the description in case you miss it here. I don't know how you would, but if you did, you would. All right, so that was just a brief thing. We have a whole video. Uh, it's only seven and a half minutes long here on YouTube that explains everything about the travertine as it relates to two different geysers and what they discovered there in its fast-forming context and what it possibly could mean to solving the puzzle, whether or not it's millions of years or a very short period of time, very intense, not long ago, called the Worldwide Flood. I'm John Adolfi with the Lost World Museum. I want to thank you very much for joining us. And as you know, we asked the provocative and important question, where do we come from? Apes, aliens, or Adam? And you guys have a great day.